Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Sustainable Stace. I hope your day is going great. It's about to get better because today we're gonna learn how to make our own organic five minute fertilizer. Here we go. I'm Stacy Taves. For me, healthy food and sustainability are totally connected. You can grow it yourself. Nature is generous. Today, as I promised, we're gonna talk about making your own organic five minute fertilizer. Dried bones, seaweed, and grass are essentially the core ingredients to what you need to make a fantastic, healthy, organic fertilizer to really meet all the macronutrient needs of your veggies, your perennials, your fruit trees, and your berries. One simple recipe pretty much does it all. And it is the time of the season right now when I'm recording when it's more or less dormant. There's not a lot growing, certainly not a lot to fertilize. That's a different time of the year. So what I'm gonna show you, I recorded when it was a good growing time. I made the fertilizer. I'll show you step by step how, how to administer it, how to get the most in your garden from minimal application of the fertilizer with macronutrients. When I come back to you after that little clip that I did when it was growing season, I'm just gonna point out to you or emphasize two other things that are kind of missed in the clip I'm gonna show you. Something about micronutrients that's critical, and if you wanna get a leg up on everyday growing year round, I'll show you a hint on that as well. So let's get to it, making your own organic five minute fertilizer. So guys, I can tell now that it's time for some fertilizer in the garden. The starts that we put in, many of them that are gonna produce some type of veggie that flowers beforehand is starting to flower. You can see this on the cucumber, you can see this on the pepper plant, you can see this on the tomatoes, and you can see it on the zucchini. So there's four different veggies here that are gonna flower before they fruit. There's other things here as you can see, like this sprouting broccoli. It's not gonna have flowers before it produces broccoli, it'll have flowers after it produces broccoli, but you can see it's past its tertiary leaves, it's clearly got an established root system, and it's ready for fertilizer as well. So, based on what we've shown you with the flowers that are setting for a lot of the veg, like tomato and zucchini and cucumber and pepper, they're flowering, they're getting ready to fruit, they definitely need, would do well and they'll do better production if they have a shot of fertilizer and the greens are gonna wanna produce more. So again, once they've got a good tertiary leaf system, those solar panels are out, then let's deliver some love to the roots as well. I've got a simple four ingredient organic recipe for fertilizer with all the ingredients here. I've got a scoop to measure it out. It's gonna be four parts of this, one part, one part, and one part. I'll tell you what the parts are in a moment. I've got a bin to stir it up in. It's gonna be a bit dusty and powdery, so you don't wanna do it indoors. That's the bin I'll stir it up in. It's bigger than what I need. And then a container with a lid so that if I don't use it all at once, I can store it. And then I've got a watering can to just deliver that love of fertilizer right to the root systems right away. So I'll just tell you what I have here so that you know what it is that we're up to. So when you look at a bag of fertilizer, commercial fertilizer in a store, it'll always have three digits, three digits. They stand for N and P and K, which are off the table of elements. N is the nitrogen, that's gonna add things that are green and leafy, so your plants can get solar panels and suck in energy. That's our alfalfa meal. Our recipe is gonna be four parts alfalfa meal to one part of all the others, so I'm gonna put two parts in now, and then two parts in later, so it's easier to blend. So that's the N, that's the green. Then you go to the P, the second number in fertilizer. And this case, it's gonna be derived from bone meal, which is phosphorus, which helps the roots establish so it can take in energy and really get strong. So that's one part of that. I got a little bit of this, so I'm gonna put this in next. The third number in your fertilizer recipe is called a K, and in this case, our K is kelp meal. It's gonna deliver, deliver potassium, and the potassium is gonna help the plant produce flowers and fruit or pr produce. So the fruit or what you're actually gonna put in your body and eat and enjoy is from the K. And then the fourth and final ingredient that's in here is not on a fertilizer label because we've done the N and the P and the K. It's lime and lime is just gonna help make sure that the soil is moving towards the neutral side of things rather than acidify. So there's the lime. So we got the N and the P and the K in there. Now I'm gonna add the final two scoops to make up for the four of alfalfa meal and then it's all together, and you might be able to tell even on the camera that there's, you know, a little bit of dust and powder. It's not crazy if you're outside and not blowing around. Gonna do a little bit of stir up of that, and once it's all stirred up, I'm just gonna put it in this little bucket with a lid, and then I can put it away to store it. But first of all, I'm gonna deliver some to some of the plants. So we've got all the ingredients stirred up now, and I'm just gonna pour them into this bucket. 
which should be just the right size for the recipe I did. And my estimate is this size of a pail that I've put here together. When I lift it up, oh, it's probably about four or five kilos. That'll be enough fertilizer for this entire season. I'll just deliver it once to each of the plants. Depending on their age, it'll be at different times. And that'll be enough for the whole season of backyard abundance for this entire three bed garden. That's all we're gonna need. So I'll just show you putting it down a little bit and that'll be it for this part. So in this case here, we've got uh, some sprouting broccoli and some tatsoi growing up and some chard. I would just put a little bit of that around these little guys and a little bit down the middle where the drip line is gonna push the energy ultimately. But obviously the drip line alone is not gonna get that energy there. So then I'm just gathering my watering can and just making sure that that fertilizer is gonna to start to get into the soil and ultimately the roots to nourish the plant. If you've done that, maybe a bigger handful than what I've done around something like the zucchini or the tomato that are larger plants, you'll have done everything you need. Let's just do one more plant, okay? So I think that right now this zucchini plant, which does have a bunch of flowers growing on it, and a little tiny zucchini, just a bit smaller than my finger going here, it's probably the largest plant in the garden. So you're just looking to get a bit of that fertilizer powder around the perimeter of the plant. That was a handful. Get some water on that stuff so that it's gonna push down to the root system. And here on, we'll just continue drip watering when we do irrigate. And that, that's just gonna slowly deliver over the growing life of this plant, all the nutrition it needs to have an amazing harvest. There you go. We've done fertilizer, guys. And remember, guys, regarding fertilizer, there's always hard ways and easy ways to do almost everything in gardening and growing food for yourself. So if buying all these different ingredients from a garden center and mixing up your fertilizer seems like a daunting task, don't be overwhelmed. Just buy a sack of organic fertilizer that's balanced in the N and the P and the K and put that down. One small sack, probably 5K, 10 at the most, is gonna do far more than you need for the whole season. So it's not gonna be expensive and you don't have to do any mixing or buy a whole bunch of ingredients. So don't be intimidated. Just find an easy way to do it. It's all gonna work. Isn't that fantastically simple and straightforward? That is a helpful little clip on how to make your own organic five minute fertilizer. It actually is an excerpt of a video that I did in an entire garden system that takes people for a whole year through everything they need to know from setting up their own organic veggie garden, critter proofing it, addressing drip irrigation, what plants like to be together and don't like to be neighbors, and everything you need to know for putting your garden beds to sleep and how to do fertilizer and select your seeds and your starts and everything else you need to know. That entire course covers everything you need for a year. A complete garden system called getbackyardabundance.com. You can find it online. So if you want to find out more of great resources like that for a whole year, getbackyardabundance.com. There's one thing I want to add to that video that I didn't include that I've learned since. Obviously, plants, just like people, don't just need three ingredients in their diet. You wouldn't just eat some protein, some fats, and carbs and say, I've got everything I need, nor would you give your plants NPK and have everything they need. Now, obviously, we know that deep down, but how do you address that for your plants as a gardener who wants to be veggie confident? I've given other video resources on my uh, channel, things like how to put your garden beds to sleep that show how to care for the soil so your plants can recover in the dormant season and the soil can be rebuilt. That's helpful. Then also building your own compost with garden waste, any kitchen scraps, clippings from around your yard, maybe some chicken manure if you have access to it. That can add a lot of micronutrients and also amend and build your soil further. But there's something about the NPK recipe that I think needs an additive and that's something that I call azomite. Now azomite is naturally sourced just like all the other ingredients in that organic five minute fertilizer recipe and azomite is full of trace minerals which are critical to all the major macronutrients being uptaken by the plants that you're growing in your garden. So if you have that recipe that we just showed you and it's four parts nitrogen and then one, one, one of the other three parts, I'd suggest add also a half part measure of azomite. So four parts nitrogen, one, 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 and half a part of azomite. And I think you've got the real deal going on there. So I hope that is super helpful for everyone out there because I want to keep on giving you fantastic resources that are hopeful, helpful, and healthy. And hey, everybody, if you've been watching this on YouTube, please subscribe and hit that little notifications bell, and I promise to keep on giving you more great resources. Till next time.